Amen. God bless you. It's good to see you guys in the house. We're going to be brief and um, started a series we um, today and um, I titled it Seeking God Through Prayer. I really want to talk about prayer and um, the first service I told us that prayer is not the way we look at prayer. And so what we're going to be doing in this service, I just pray that I'll be able to be done next Sunday with this series. But we're going to go through routes with this prayer topic. First of all, we're going to look at the why of prayer in the Sunday services. That is this Sunday and next Sunday we'll talk about the why. And we're going to mix it up with fasting. The Wednesday in between, that's next Wednesday coming, we're going to look at the how. Because if we're going to be effective in our prayers, we need to understand the why of prayer and the how of prayer. So today we're going to be looking at the why. Why must we pray? I told them in the first service that prayer is a gift. You can't be effective in your prayer life till you know and understand that prayer is a gift from the Father. Amen. It's like a son or a father giving his son or his daughter cell phone. Goes to this Verizon store, purchase a phone, iPhone, I don't know, any kind of phone. And says, daughter or son, I want you to have this phone. And the purpose of you buying that phone for your son is not to play games, even though they use the phone to do games now. It's for you to be able to communicate with them, right? There is the purpose why you gave that son or that daughter the cell phone, why you gave them the phone is so that you can fellowship with them, you can commune with them. There's no fellowship without first communication. Every fellowship is hinged on communication, so it's key. So you give your son or your daughter that phone and says, take this phone and so that if I want to reach you or you want to reach me, this is where, this is how you can reach me. How will you feel when you buy that beautiful phone, say Sam, um, Samsung 9, Samsung 9 or uh, iPhone 20 or 30? I don't know where we are right now. I'm stuck with 6. I'm good. I'm not going to waste my time chasing after iPhone this. I'm stuck with 6. My 6 is still working. I just love it. Amen? If you are running after iPhone, that's go ahead and do that. That's good for you. But me, I'm stuck in 6. And you gave your son that iPhone 6 or iPhone 10. And guess what? And you're trying to reach your son and you're waiting for all day, all night, one week gone, two weeks gone, three weeks, four weeks, one month, and you've not had anything from your son. Guess what? You look back and say, for, wait a minute, I bought a phone for him or her. And it's not talking to me. And the next time you see that child, you say, you know what? When is the phone I get to you? I don't know if you're me. That's the first thing I'm going to ask. I, I, I may forget to ask him how he's doing. <laughs> Got to be honest right now. I may not even bother to ask how he's doing. The first thing I'm going to do, did I buy a phone for you? He says, yes. Why can't you? Do you think it's just a, um, for the correction? So that you can call me. So that I can reach you. You know how we feel when our kids don't call us? And we already made provision for the cell phone. That's exactly how God feels when you don't pray. Prayer is a gift from the Father to you so that you can commune with him. So when we don't communicate with God in prayer, we are just denying God fellowship. It's just like that father or that son that says, well, daddy gave me a phone, but I'm not going to call him. And that is just waiting for you to call him. There's no way we can reach God outside of prayer. The only form God made, the only form God designed for us to commune with him, to have fellowship with him, it's not even written in the Bible. It's prayer. And so when we don't pray, we don't fellowship with him. So many of us today don't have a prayer life. And so we're losing our fellowship with him. 
I said to them in the first service, when you don't pray, you are prideful. Because the way God created us and wired us is for us to solely depend on him. And that's the reason why he gave you that cell phone called prayer. That's why he gave you the gift of prayer. Jeremiah 3, 33, verse 3, call upon me. Anytime I will answer you. I will show you great things. And today we just say, you know, we don't need to call him. We don't have time for prayer. We don't want to do anything. So every time you don't pray, you deny God fellowship. We deny him fellowship. That's important. Just want to encourage you. And that's why we're embarking on a 10 days prayer and fast. It's not for the fun of it. And I say to them in the first service, prayer is not a religious duty. Prayer is a relationship. Prayer is a fellowship. You get frustrated. And the reason why people are not praying today is that they are not been, they've not been able to, to, to marry reality with expectation. That's why most believers, and some of them are sitting there listening to me, the reason why you're not praying is because you don't believe God will answer you. The reason why people don't pray is because they don't have the faith, they don't believe God will answer them. Because if you know that God will answer you, you will always commune with him. Amen. If you have a friend that is super rich, if your friend is Bill Gates and has all this dollar in his bank account, your real friend, I don't mean... Refriend Bill Gates. Guess what? Every time you are in need, what are you going to do? You're going to pick up the phone and talk to him. Because it's your friend. Because you are fellowship. So every time we don't pray, we deny God fellowship. And prayer should not be seen as a duty. But prayer should be seen as fellowship. You must know that God wants to commune with you like you give your son that cell phone or your daughter that cell phone, not as a duty to call you, but fellowship. That you just want to hear his voice. You just call him and say, you know what, I just want to see how you're doing. I know this for a fact. My son now is in New York. He's in school in New York. Every other day, I just pick up the phone and call him. I miss him more now. So I just pick up the phone and call him. And just, I just want to check on you. How are you doing? How's this game? What's going on here? What's going on here? Why? Because I needed to fellowship with him. Can you imagine I call him and he's not picking up the phone? Think how I'm going to feel. Think how you're going to feel when you call your son or your daughter and they don't pick up your phone. That's how God feels when you don't talk to him in prayer. That's how God feels when you decide to complain, decide to grumble, decide to cry out your eyes and not talk to him. That's how God feels when we don't pray. So prayer is not a duty. Prayer is a fellowship. It's not a button to be pushed. The reason why people don't really, 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 really enjoy God in prayer is because they think prayer is just a button they have to push. 911. So when they have a problem, they run to God. They run to the altar and God says, no, I am not Father Christmas. I am God Almighty. I gave you a cell phone. I want to come in with you. I want to fellowship with you. I want to talk with you. I want to see how you are doing. I want to rub my hands with you. Isaiah chapter 1 verse number 19 says, Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God wants to reason with you. That's why he gave you the tool. And that gift is prayer. Thank God we're embarking on a 10 days journey on prayer. What happens with fasting and prayer is that fasting takes you from the world. Prayer connects you to the almighty God. That's how it works. Told them in the first service that fasting never moves God. God is not interested in your fast. I don't care whether it's six to six or dry or wet or green or yellow. I don't care what kind of fast. It doesn't interest God. Does not move God. Does not change God. What changes God, what moves God is the prayer. Because fasting takes you, disconnects you from the world, while prayer connects you to the Father. So when you fast without praying, you are just doing, going hunger strike. Hunger strike. So I don't want to eat. You want to lose weight. Exercise. But if you are going to fast these 10 days, 
we must pray as we fast. Am I coming in? Am I, am I saying something to you? So prayer is a gift. Say to yourself, prayer is a gift from God for me to me. Can we say it? Prayer is a gift from God to me. Like I give my son cell phone to commune with me. God gave us prayer to commune with him. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. A born again one. Amen. Now we says the first reason why we do prayer is number one. Prayer helps to engage the power of God on our behalf. You can't experience God till you have real prayer. And when I talk about prayer, I'm not talking about a button to be pushed. I'm talking about a relationship to be pursued. That's what prayer is. Prayer is not a body. And that's why you see people. Have you, have you seen Christians today? The devil, they have a bad dream. Somebody died in the dream. They are running elder scatter to start a five days fasting and prayer. Somebody threatening them or someone is doing something and it's not working. The next thing is 911, pray, get a prayer, we got to pray. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not a prayer that interests God. That's not an effective way to pray. An effective way to pray is to have a relationship with God. That's why Jesus himself, we're going to talk about the hour on Wednesday. I love it. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about the hour. Let me just give you a preview of what the hour, what Jesus is talking about. He says, when you pray, you say, our Father, which is in heaven. So prayer is a relationship because it starts his prayer. is in teaching us prayer. It's started with relationship, not the button. Not that I, I need this. No, no. He says, when you want to pray, just go to him and say, Daddy. How are you? It's a relationship. And go to the Old Testament. Look at the simple prayer. In fact, I've never seen this scripture as a prayer scripture before, before today. When I was meditating and the Holy Spirit does it. Psalm 23 is a prayer. So we're going to look at the how from that and from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Relational. I, I, I shall not want. Why? He is my shepherd. Not is a shepherd. He is my shepherd. I have a relationship. So prayer is not a button to be pushed. It's what is relational. If prayer will be effective, it must not be seen as a duty, but it must be seen as fellowship. My communicate here. I share with them in the first service. Check Christians or believers that cease prayer as a button to be pushed. They are always running elder scatter year in, year out. Think about it. Because before you, when problem comes, they call 911 and the fire service comes and shh. The next thing that happens, the bigger problem comes. Why? Because God is merciful. When you call 911, he's still going to answer you. But it's just going to be a one-time thing. Hello? But when it becomes a relational, even before the problem comes, the angels are just standing to watch over you. And they still like, Where, where's that devil? Let him come. So you don't have to call 911 all the time. Because they watch over you. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high habais. Under the shadow. He doesn't need to call 9 woman. He's already dwelling. He's already having a relationship. He sees prayer as a relational act, not a button to be pushed. And that's what I'm trying to teach us here in this church. Because the church, they've taught us different things about prayer. That just come, crashed into the gate. And we do that all the time and we're not getting results. Because we're not doing it the way Jesus wants us to do it. Jesus says prayer must be based on relationship and fellowship and not a button to be pushed. So when we pray, we engage the power of God to walk on our behalf. When we don't pray, we are prideful. We're saying, God, I don't need your help. 
I can take care of me. And God says, okay. But every time we come to God in prayer, all we're saying is that God, I don't know the way. My heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I am super weak. Don't know how to do tomorrow. One thing I know how is to connect with you. And I'm connecting with you in fellowship, in relationship. Number two principle we saw, I get the first morning, early morning tape. Number two reason for prayer is prayer brings divinity to humanity. What brings heaven to your life is prayer. What brings the power of God into our life is prayer. Number three, prayer enables divine encounter. I've experienced God in my life. I've seen God walk in my life like never before. I tell you truth, I can attribute these things to prayer. Prayer is what it separates you from failure. Because prayer, when you pray, you activate God's divine encounter in your life. I have never seen a man that prays. When I talk about prayer, I'm not just talking about coming to scream because we call for 10 days prayer and fasting. I'm talking about having fellowship with God. I'm talking about people that see prayer as relationship, relational, not just a button to be pushed. The psalmist says, he that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Relational. He abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Does not exclude him from trouble, but the one whose shadow is under protect him from all the evils that the enemy will send to him. It says, then I shall say of the Lord is my refuge, my hiding place. What is he hiding me from? It's hiding me from the tempest of this world because the world is wicked. There are people out there to kill you, to destroy you. There are people that is waiting to celebrate your fall. But says, but I am hiding in the secret place because I, have, I, have, I know how to commune with him. You don't have a relationship with a person that you don't speak to. You can't say you have a relationship with God if you don't have a prayer life. The proof of your relationship is your prayer life. Because every relationship, communication is the bedrock for every relationship. So if you don't speak to God and God doesn't speak to you, how dare you say you have a relationship with someone that you don't even speak to? You don't even find time to speak to. You don't make it a priority to speak to him. And you say you have a relationship with someone? I don't know what kind of a relationship is that. Somebody says, and as you say of the Lord, is my refuge, my hiding place. I will not be afraid of the tempest. How am I not going to be afraid? A shield, I'm under the secret place. I'm in the secret place. A shadow. I have a relationship. I'm abiding. The word abiding simply means you are movable, stationed in him. You are not a visitor to his presence. You are a resident. God resides in you. He that dwelt, then abides. It takes you to do the dwelling, to initiate it. So prayer is not a burden that we're going to push. It's, it's a relationship that we must pursue. And when we pray, we enables divine encounter. Our prayer enables divine encounter. I've never seen a man that encounter God without prayer. Every encounter that we read in the Bible that change a destiny for good, they are all at the altar of prayer. It reminds me of Jacob when he was running away from his brother. Got to Bethel. 
Bethel is a, there's an altar in Bethel that the father or his grandfather actually laid in Bethel, the place of prayer. There he prayed. There he saw the heavens open. When he was coming back from that journey of 21 years, even though he feels to our own calculation is blessed, he had everything. Came out of that place with two wives. Came out with about so many children. Yet he still know that if he's going to make it in life, he must communicate. He must, he must have an encounter with his maker. The Bible says Jacob separates himself from his family. Why? Divine encounter is a personal thing. You have to encounter God yourself in the place of prayer. The place of encounter cannot take two. I have never seen two people getting encountered at the same time. The personal thing, you work it out in the place of prayer. If Jacob was not prayerful, if Jacob did not separate himself to have an all-night vigil, there's no way he would have encountered the angel because prayer is the bedrock for every divine encounter. If you want an encounter in your life, encounter in your family, if you want a change of story, a turnaround of an ugly situation, you must engage in true prayer. I'm talking about true prayer now. I'm not just talking about just making noise. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm talking about building a relationship with him. That you're not seeing prayer as a duty. You're seeing prayer as a relationship. So when you go on your knees, you want to talk to your heavenly father. You're not being driven because of your need. You are driven because of fellowship. That's what makes prayer effective. That's what makes prayer powerful. We live in a world that we just want it now. We just want it now. So we wait for the trouble. We wait for, the, for us to be overwhelmed before we run to God. And when we run to God, we run to God and say, please pay me now. And God says, what did you do for me for me to pay you? But my mercy will speak for you anyway. But guess what? Mercy only stays for some time. It never stays forever. That's why the psalmist says, your mercy will follow me. Because no, originally mercy doesn't stay. It comes, solve the problem, walk away. So Sammy says, well, because you are my shepherd, this message that is supposed to come and go, let him follow me. Let me have a permanent encounter with goodness and mercy. Let him follow me. It's a demand. It's a prayer he was praying. Amen. Amen. So prayer helps you to encounter God. I don't know what you're going through in life. We have the stage set in the next 10 days from June, uh, September 5th to September 14th. If you encounter God, that difficulty would be solved in one second. You know, sometimes in my life, I don't look for who is going to help me. I just look to encounter him. Because if I can touch him, if I can touch him, if I can penetrate in my prayer, if I can break through the ceiling of the sky, if I can break through the second heaven to reach into the throne of grace, there's nothing. There's no obstacle that can hold me. There's no grave that can, that can hold me down. Because Jesus conquered the grave. Can I hear loud amen? amen. Can I hear born again one? Amen. Number four, prayer is the force that moves the hand of God. Prayer is what? The force that moves the hand of God. You want God to move on your behalf? Engage in prayer. It's the most difficult thing to do. Most especially when it's done right. People can read the Bible from now to Jericho. Tell them to pray. They can't. People can do tweet, Facebook, phone, but tell them to connect with the Heavenly Father for a destiny-changing encounter. I don't have time. Too busy. We are busy for the things that are not important. And the one that can change our situation in a twinkle of an eye. It's difficult. You know why? We don't believe God can answer us. I've come to introduce to you the God that answers prayer. Amen. Come to introduce to you the God that is faithful. I've come to introduce to you the God that is not partial. It's not a respecter of person. He said, if you seek me, you shall find me. If you seek me, you shall find me. That's the God I'm telling you about. It's not a respecter of persons. 
It does not consult with your past to set your future. It's a God that loves and wants a relationship with you. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? Number five. Prayer is the master key for divine empowerment. You want, div you want to be empowered divinely? Prayer is the master key. Divine empowerment comes through prayer. I have never seen anyone that is empowered without prayer. I'm talking about being, being empowered on every side. Favor on every side. Prayer. That's prayer. Prayer changes anything. There's nothing you are going through right now that prayer cannot solve. There's no obstacle that you are facing that God cannot reverse because prayer is a master key. Prayer is a master key. Money does not move God. Your crying does not move God. I have never seen someone that cry and move God. But prayer moves me. I'm talking about the right prayer, not 911 prayer. Prayer based on fellowship. Prayer based on relationship. That's the prayer I'm talking about. Before now, growing up as a Christian, I've never seen prayer in this light. And God began to walk in me as God is walking with this church to begin to understand what prayer really is and what God desires. You know, I've I been in the church for a long time and um, we go to these crusades and we have great men of God come, grab and loot, grab. I claim it, I claim it, I claim it. And discover that what you claim it is uh, uh, nothing. How many of you know that? How many of you know that? Mom made presents. We crank this music. Appeal to your flesh. You come and scream at the top of your voice. God, oh my enemy, die, 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 die. <laughs> you got him. The next day, the enemy, they are still standing. In fact, it looks as if your prayer just fed them. They're getting fatter and fatter. The problem is expanding. And God says, that's not the right way. When I give you the tool of prayer, it's because I want to have fellowship with you. And the moment you are dwelling in me, under my shadow, there's nothing that can pluck you out of my hand. There's no good things that can be denied you. Because my presence, in my presence, there's what? There's fullness. So God begins to walk on me. There are people in the church that got mad. I said, well, I am one kind of a person that if I'm going the wrong direction and God helped me to find out that that is the wrong direction, I am not ashamed to say I was wrong. This is wrong. If it's not producing results, why go? Can, can you imagine you're going somewhere and you're not getting anywhere? It's still a U-turn. And look for the right place and start heading. And that's what I'm trying to let you guys know. Real prayer. It's always hinge on relationship with him first. That's what Jesus says. Our Father. He says, when you pray. Not if you pray. When you pray. This is how to pray. Start by saying, our Father. Don't pray without having a relationship with Him. It is your relationship with Him that establishes the goodness, His goodness in your life. So what we have done for so long a time, most especially those of us that come from where I came from, we appeal to your flesh. We come to church some good church. I don't want to see the bad church because there's no bad church. Pray for your mother-in-law. 
kill all your enemy, you begin to see people screaming, that, 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 that. Where did you get that from? The Bible even said the God that we are praying to does not wish that any should perish. And you are telling him to kill somebody and he says, I don't wish that they perish. Some people are looking at me and saying, you don't know. <laughs> Satan is too big when you are not connected to God. The moment you are connected with him in prayer, you know why you see that there is problem? It's because you are not praying. When you are engaged with God in prayer, others are, it's like the prophet of Elijah. You remember his servant saw so many armies, but the guy that is praying saw angels. So what are you seeing? If you are prayerful, you will see the angels of God that encamp around you. But if you are not prayerful, you're going to see all the enemies around you. No, don't forget what I say is by prayer. Prayer is what? A relationship. Be your relationship. Any, I, I always say this. If any witch like fly over my house, what happens to you? I don't know. The guy that watches over me, if he permits you, if he keeps you alive, it's your business. I will not do anything because I'm under. Where did this get from? This is this lady's things. This lady's things are beautiful. Can we celebrate the ladies again? <laughs> Can I crack a joke here? When we're doing all these beautiful things, can we celebrate our Reverend Holder somewhere? Great job, great job. If you have to do any decoration for wedding or anything, go to her. Where's she? Yeah, that's she there. Great lady, free of charge. She didn't even pay. The church didn't pay. All these beautiful things. I said, ah, this is Gellies, oh. How will I preach on Sunday with Gellies? But well, God changed my heart. I, I didn't know I'd be able to preach with all these girly things that is just, I, I didn't, blinking, 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 blinking. Ladies, women and women, blinking, 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 blinking. He helped me to be able to preach, amen. I'm, I'm getting over the Tony will take care of this to next tomorrow. I don't want to go through this twice. In a, uh, Tony will take care of this and fix it well. Amen. Then number, number, number five, or number six. Second, first Chronicle, number four. Let me give you guys scripture for number five. First Chronicle, chapter four. Divine empowerment is the story of Jabez. How many of you know the story of Jabez? You know, we know the story of Jabez. It was empowered through prayer. It says, God, that you may enlarge my coat. Empower me and bless me. It is in the place of prayer. Please, don't miss these 10 days. We are going to call on the God of heaven. And guess what? It's the ninth month. Every woman that carries a baby for nine months must deliver. Yes. Your destiny for this year will be delivered. Yes. That amen is not born again. Yes. I said what you are destined for this year. On the ninth month, it shall be delivered. Yes. But guess what? It shall be delivered in the altar of prayer. Yes. In the altar of prayer. Yes. I'm not here to deceive you. I'm not just to say receive it. No, you have to give back to it in prayer. Give back. You have to push. Amen. 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 So number six, prayer is the tool for total turnaround. You want the total turnaround? Come and pray. I told you my story several times. My story was horrible. God, through prayer. I don't joke with prayer. It turned it around. This young man is there. He knows it. Come on. The same thing with him. He's a man of prayer. Prayer. What can prayer not do? It turned turn, turn, turn around. Remember. A few years ago, they were calling us frustrated brothers. 
Why? Because we're praying. People called us frustrated, brother. Because every minute we have, we're going to retreat to go and pray. We have fire flame there. People were saying, did you kill Jesus? Why are you praying this much? But today they are seeing the result of the prayer. They are seeing the result. How God is blessing us effortlessly. Effortlessly. Yes. Anytime we think anything, we get it done. Yes. It may look impossible, but when we step in, God comes supernaturally and help us. Prayer. We are called frustrated brothers. Are you busy? Today. <laughs> oh, Jesus is Lord. What prayer can do? Total. You want to turn around? Prayer. You want to turn around? Pray. I'm not talking about chewing gum kind of prayer. I'm talking about read prayer. Engaging God. God, you must bless me. Setting your heart to pray. For a total turnaround. I have never seen anyone that encounter a turnaround without prayer. There's nothing God cannot move for you when you pray. He can move a whole government for your sake. He can suspend constitution for your sake. It's possible. How much are you ready to invest? To engage? I have never seen anyone that have an encounter with God and devil kills. Never. When Jacob was running from his brother, the last time the brother saw him, he said, if I see you again, I'll kill you. The brother has been preparing to kill him. Esau. Am I right? Jacob knew that if he did not have an encounter with God, Esau would kill him. He knew that. So it, what he did was, God, I can't face Esau. I can't face the world. There are so many enemies out there against my prosperity. I can't go meet them without you. So Jacob encountered God overnight. And God, the angel says, Listen, let me go. He said, I'm not letting you go. You must bless me. You must bless me. You must bless me. What is the blessing? You must bless me. Say something to my life. And the angel now says, what is your name? Say, my name is Jacob. Say, from today, no more Jacob. Israel. You know what the man of Israel is? Prince. He has power with man and power with God. The next day, he saw his soul. He saw kissed him. The one that wanted to kill him kissed him. The one that vowed to kill him, kissed him. Ah, your enemy will kiss you. That thing that looks as if it's going to destroy you, that thing will work for your favor. It's a stepping stone for your next level. But you must engage in prayer. It doesn't just happen. Because if it just happens, you would have gotten it by now. Let anybody deceive you. Nobody can pray for you like you. The greatest deceit in the church is I'm praying for you. How many people are really praying for you if you don't pray for yourself? Everybody carries their own. Can I drop my own? I'll carry your own. Let's not be deceived. I'm not saying I don't pray for you guys. As the Spirit leads, I pray. But if you are depending on my prayer alone, I'm not that kind of pastor that lies to people. Who. I have my own issues. And they are heavy. Sometimes I don't sleep. Not because I'm praying. Problem. Left, right, center. And you're telling me I should. <laughs> I'll be praying for you. Pray for yourself. In my country, they say, Osondu. Raise of life, run for your own life. Don't be dependent on somebody to pray for you. This is the life from the pit of hell. It's the greatest lie I've seen in the church. Men of God, you, you sow your seed and pray for it. It's a lie. They carry your seed, they don't pray anymore. They forget you. 
I am telling you the truth. I'm a man of God. Uh. Don't be deceived. The only one that can pray for you is your pastor. If somebody else I think is praying for you, it's a liar. Uh, doctor, I'm praying for you. He said, ask them, I mean, when did you pray? When is the exact time you pray for me? I know them. They come here. And some of you guys just go, so sit, so sit, so sit. The moment they take off, they don't remember you again. <laughs> the only time they remember you guys is this when they <laughs> telling you guys the truth. I go to pre- I preach it some places. I go around. The moment I leave the place, I don't remember their face again. <laughs> I just I got to tell you guys the truth. Oh, that man of God. He's not praying for you. He's eating your money. <laughs> Sit down one place and be eating good food on your account. The only one that can pray for you is your pastor. Because you are seeing them there with you. They see you when you are going through pain. Because when you go through pain, the pain stops you. This is how I pray for people. The moment I know one of the sisters is going through problems or one of the it. That becomes a prayer something for me. Because it's a burden to me. Because you are going through something. I have to pray. But say just from nowhere, I'll be looking for prayer point. <laughs> Maybe it's Pastor Ruchin today. No. <laughs> am, am I communicating here? Yeah. I got, we got to be truthful. So that you know how to pray for yourself. You don't pray for your, your, your own. Oh. Huh? <laughs> you don't know. Church has been deceived for a long time. I see it every time. Man of God will come from outside. You see church folks. They never even give you, they never even sold to your Bible. They will bring your key to you as you look at this guy. You are keen to somebody that is far away. The one that is digging the soil that you are planting in. You just do one gymnastic for one day. Leave that thing alone. Am I communicating here? That's in Let's be truthful. Let's be very truthful to ourselves. We got to pray for you. Don't go to bed without prayer. Cover your destiny by prayer. Cover your children with prayer. You don't know how much time I call my kids every day. God protect them. God protect them. Every day. I don't just say, where well, they are going to be. No, I engage in prayer to bring forth their destiny because there are challenges in this world. The Bible says when men sleep, their destiny slip away. If you don't pray, you become a prey to the devil. I don't send my kids without prayer. Every day I back them up, call them from one to Z. Every one of them I call them and I bless them. Speak over them in prayer. Kale Shatibara, no weapon form against them. They will do good. They shall not die. I am not ready to bury any of them. They shall excel. Everywhere they go to, doors will open over them. Every door, doors open to them. Engage in prayer. But if you are busy, 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 you are losing the life, the destiny of your children. Increase. Let me not talk. We come to this country, those of us that come from where I came from, and we just settle for where we are. That's all. 12 hours flight, that's all you can talk about, and you think it's okay? Where we are right now, you will think it's okay? But there's plenty in this land. What brings that destiny out is your prayer and diligence. We are so complacent. Hey, I have a car. You didn't pay for it all. It's bank's car. I have a house. It's bank's own. Where we come from, people buy cash. Then why will you settle for this? Engage in prayer. Enough is enough. Give back to your destiny by prayer. God, I don't want to be among the numbers. Separate me from the rest of the people. It is by prayer. Don't be settled with what we have right now. 
Engage in prayer. Jabez says God. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable. In fact, he was living in America. <laughs> while the rest of his siblings were living in Africa. And yes, even in America. Even in America. Bitterness. Even in the land of the free, of plenty. You don't need money to get a car. You don't need money to do this. Even in that land, many of us are having a date. And we see, <laughs> yeah, I do well by the grace of God. No. This guy separated himself. Oh, Lord, that thou may bless me indeed. Separate me from every pussy. Let my life be celebrated. And the Bible says God had his prayer. Enlarge his cause. And make him a name. They were talking about him today. It was in the back of prayer. A man that was not ready to settle for nothing. You can work hard. And you can pray hard. And you pray hard. You are asking heaven to back you. When you work hard, he gives you little. That will not be your case. Amen. 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 Number eight. Thank you. You guys are following. Prayer is for what? Total turnaround. First Samuel chapter 1 verse number 10. Yeah, I'm just reading the scripture. I'm the one preaching. You guys are the one listening. I'm the one staring, so don't worry. Anna. <laughs> Prayer for turn around. Anna was the first wife. Can we take this out? Okay. Anna was the first wife to this man. Anna was the first wife. Life did not smile on her. Life did not smile on her. And the husband was looking for his child. He can't get for Anna. Grabbed the second wife. The second wife just came and was just producing. As if no problem. Anna was enjoying. The husband said, don't worry. I'll give you double. And she was enjoying that double for a long time. After some time, Anna said, ah, ah. I'm not ready for that double. I want my own. Bible says after they have eaten, they went to Shiloh, Pari, to enjoy themselves. But Anna was not ready to do that enjoyment. She has done it for a long time, and her life is still where she is. She's being mocked by people around. She's becoming a laughing stock by people and also the society, and even the ground is mocking at her. Look at this childless woman. And Anna says, no, I must change and turn around my situation. First Samuel chapter 1, verse number 10, give me that scripture. Anna says, no, I must change something. I'm sick and tired. God, if you will not bless me, kill me. I'm sick and tired. Thank you very much. Can we mute this? Anna says, I'm sick and tired. Look at verse number 10. Give, you know, give me number, number 11, please. No time. Sorry, give, let, let, leave it there. Leave number 10. One time after they had finished their meal in the house of the Lord at Shiloh, Anna got up. She was what? In deep, in deeply distressed. Deeply. The prayer that God answers is not the prayer from the head, it's the heartfelt prayer. Prayer that is born from pain. It's not a prayer that she's reciting. It's not about reciting a prayer. It's about coming to tell God from the depth of her heart. The Bible says she was deeply in distress. And she cried bitterly. As she prayed unto the Lord. Bitterly. It was an heartfelt prayer. Not a head fair. To 
third turn around. I'll tell you my story and I close with it. Pick it up next week. I've shared it here several times. I was a man like Jabez. Full of promise, but nothing works for me. Nothing. You give me a million dollars today to start a business. Yes, I will start, but the business will collapse after some time. Nothing works in my hand. They die. Telling the truth. Ask those that really know me. I've done business. Our friends give me money to fund. Nothing survived. To the extent that when my mom is praying at New Crossover, when it gets to my turn, I am the third. When it gets to the third, she begins to cry. I know what she's praying. What kind of problem is this my son having? Nothing works for him. One day, crossover, I decide not to go to any crossover anyway. I remember, before that, I told my brother. I said, no, brother. I said, you know what? Take care of the other ones. Leave me alone. You've tried. I said, no, brother, I've tried a lot. No. It's not working. Nothing works. Till one day, I just said, you know what? I remember my prayer. I was super naked. I lay down on the floor. I said, God, you better kill me. After this time, I was a prayer warrior. You must know. We do deliverance. But I'm not delivered. He knows now. We go to church. But the enemy was eating lunch on my head. Till I said, God, kill me. Or you bless me. That night, God gave me a revelation that transformed. I have never... Since then, I can tell you the exact time. Everything that I touch works. Everything that I touch till tomorrow works. Everything that I touch works. God, God gave me one revelation and I saw what was holding me down. Saw it with my eyes in dream. But it, I, it was where I was sleeping that I saw it. I prayed and sleep. You know when you pray and cry and you sleep up? Ever since then, I'm not there yet, but I'm climbing. Every year I see progress made. Every year. May not be too big, but I see that I was not, I'm not used to where I used to be. I have moved forward. Despite the enemies throwing Missiles at me, I am still moving forward. Despite the wind blowing left and right, I am still moving forward. Why? I am operating under the blessing that comes by prayer. I refuse to be refused. That's where I am today. So people ask, when people ask, tell them you don't know what I'm operating under. relationship with him through prayer I'm not just praying for praying's sake I have a dynamic relationship when we started this church I was telling one brother for 12 years plus we have not buried one person here because I told God when we started I said I am not ready to bury don't kill anybody in my hand we've not we've had people survive cancer here Without even we knowing. Not one, not two, not three, not four. Because I told God, I am not ready to bury. I am not ready. And I, I'm still telling God, I am not I have a covenant of life. I am not ready to bury anybody here. But that must be backed by prayer. Must be backed by prayer. Just talking it. Think it will work? No. Because every time you make a prophecy, it's an advanced knowledge. Stand up on your feet and let's pray. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit us at Fountain of Grace, 427 Turnpike Street, Canton, Massachusetts, 02021. Or give us a call at 781-821-1121.
or feel free to give us an email at admin at fountainofgracebos.org or visit us at our website at www.fogbos.org.